So you missed the Grammys. You missed the part with Katy Perry and her choreographed horse. Like, she literally had dancers and somebody was the horse head. Oh. When you tweeted me the whole horse thing, I thought you went there was actually a horse because I didn't actually watch. But now I know. Makes it even weirder, right? <laughs> Beetlejuice, a human horse. <laughs> All right, on that note, you know we love this song. You know we bump this song. It makes me feel gangsta. <laughs> Just makes me, hold on, I've got like, like. So, the fact that it's Juicy J. Right? What's your favorite part about it? Hold on, I like the. Yeah. You did snap, you did a shoulder bop. Oh, yeah. This is how you get creative in your business on a Friday. This is Jacqueline Bullen. You're on my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to awaken our inner rebel and our inner choreographer. All right, we've got Shireen Faltas here with us and a little bit of Katy Perry. So right. sit back, relax, and get ready to talk about being a creative artistpreneur and embracing your business mogul mindset, folks. This is damn good. I got I got we got to meet Juicy J, Shireen. Right? Yeah. All right. So, let's get started. Oh, Katy Perry doesn't want to turn off. Hold on one sec. Shireen, thank you so much for being here today on my YouTube channel. You are awesome. I love you. <laughs> um, let jump right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Shireen. For those of us for those that are going to be watching on the YouTube, give us your background. My background, okay, well, it's kind of a long story. I'll try not to go too long. I don't want to bore your people. We did just hype them up with the Katy Perry. We hyped them so up. got to keep it up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I am a little Egyptian girl who was, you know, first generation born here and was pretty much, <clears throat> from the second I came out of the womb, expected to do something very left-brained in the world, like doctor, lawyer, or engineer, because that's what Egyptians do, and... That was, that's, it's a very collectivistic culture. You do what your mama tells you. You don't ask questions. It is what it is. So, you know, I was kind of born a creative type. I was really, I excelled a lot in extracurriculars like athletics and dance and all kinds of creative stuff. I um, didn't feel like it was okay for me to be that or do that. And so what I ended up doing was thinking like, oh, if I can't do the doctor, lawyer, engineer thing, then I must not be smart because like that's not what my family accepts or views as valuable. Mm. So let me just kind of forsake who I am and forsake what I'm good at. And I'll just like try to fly under radar and do like just enough to like not look like a loser. So I, you know, went to college because I was supposed to go to college. That's what you do. And I wanted to major in dance. I wanted to do something creative. I really wanted to like soak in that experience of getting to finally be who I wanted to be. But I was like, my mom's going to think I'm going to be a, a broke artist, which I don't want to be a loser in my mama's eyes. So I did communications, which was interesting to me, but not quite what I really wanted to do. But at least my mom wouldn't think you're going to be a loser, you know? So then I graduate, I get the quintessential desk job and like three months in I'm sexually harassed. And this dude like walks wow. into my little office that I thought was so cool that I got an office. He walks into my office and he like closes the door behind him and he walks up to my desk and he leans over my desk, like hovers over me and goes, you know what? If you don't lose your attitude, I'm going to bend you over this desk and spank you. And I remember just wow. being like, like I was literally like three months out of college. I was like a green little child who just like came out into the world, like excited about being an adult. And I literally was like, uh, I don't know what to do with this. So I ended up, my girlfriends, we went to lunch and they were like, that is sexual harassment. So I was like, Oh, okay. I got to tell my boss, tell my boss. And you know, they were all like outraged. The president and the CFO were outraged. They took it up to the highest guy, the CEO who was like really chauvinist, you know, hired the, the assistant with the big boobs and, and like, just like, Oh, you know, like he was into that kind of a thing. So he just looked me in the face and said, he was joking, right? Like you can still work with him, right? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. And I walked out of his office that day and it was literally like the world went dark. And I continued working there for a full year after that. And every day it was like a piece of my dignity was being stripped out of my body. And like by the end of a year and a half of working there out of college, I was like a shell of a person, very cynical, very bitter, very much sort of like, choosing to be smart to get respect in the corporate world by being a bitch instead of being like my friendly sort of, you know, goofy self. I just was kind of like going away from myself. So luckily I had a friend who kind of 
nagged me to go to this personal development seminar and I didn't want to go and I didn't want to go, but like the people pleaser in me just could not say no one more time. And so I went and was asking for my money back. I was like bitter. I didn't want to be there. And it ended up just honestly opening my eyes like crazy and changing my life and really making me realize how much I was making choices to survive in an environment that actually didn't fit who I truly wanted to be in the world. And also realizing like, oh, I've made choices to make my mama happy, but I'm miserable. So what do I want to do? And all of a sudden, like at the age of 25, it was like, holy shit, <laughs> hope we can cuss on your thing because- Why not? <laughs> Keep it real. It's your story, you know? And, yeah, and right. the, the first thing that stands out to me is, you know, thank you for sharing that experience because I'm sure there are a lot of women, and, and this happens to men too, that deal with that at work and it's awkward and it's uncomfortable and it's something that needs to be addressed. And, you know, so that huge props and kudos. Second thing is, I think a lot of people can relate with- some of our mindset stuff starting at a very young age. So it's this, these approval seeking behaviors that we learn at home that we then bring into the corporate world. Well, I don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers. I want to keep my mouth shut because that's what I did growing up. I was taught to be respectful. And, you know, it sort of goes back to what you're saying. We're not really honoring ourselves or being true to ourselves. So you went to that personal development seminar and then you actually kind of like took a dive into the world of stand up comedy and you worked with MTV. Like, how did you? go from one extreme to the other. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so like this seminar really made me realize just sort of a wake up moment, which is why my company is Awaken the Rebel. It's like do what the F you want, wake up out of your sleep, like you get to have the life you want, you just choose it and seize it and to do that whole carpe diem cliche moment, you know? So um, so I had my Awaken the Rebel moment and then I quit my master's degree. I immediately started doing stand-up comedy because I always wanted to do entertainment, but you know, I didn't want to be a broke artist or whatever. So I did stand-up comedy for two years, and like by the end of it, I was getting scouted by MTV and VH1 and me in to do like auditions to be a VJ or a talking head or whatever, and it was all really exciting. And I found myself like winding down at that point, like not enjoying stand-up comedy anymore. And this is actually one thing, as far as like career choices, that I'm really learning. Like when I look back and think, oh my god, I was so lost. Like I didn't realize I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. The truth is, I really did know what I wanted to do with my life, and I was following my intuition. I think I just felt insecure about it because whatever, like sometimes we do that to ourselves, you know? When I first started out, when I was in college, I was in one of those dance teams that's like on MTV's best dance crew. Like they later went on to be on that show. Like they're like super like street dance type oh, stuff. I love it. So I did that for two years and like I really wanted to be a professional dancer, but they, they partied so hard in that industry and they were just so like, it just wasn't my vibe. I was not a partier. I like would go to bed at 10 and wake up at six sort of a granola hippie, like a nerd, you know? So I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work for me. So I ditched that, did comedy for two years. And the same kind of thing happened. Like after two years of doing comedy, I was like, dude, everyone's like bipolar and really bitter and thinks marriage is the devil. And I just don't want that life. And I don't want to be around bitter people all the time. So I ended up ditching comedy. And I really felt like, what the heck is wrong with me? Like, why can't I stick to something? Or, you know, I was just kind of like, Ugh, what is this? I, so I tried acting and hosting for a bit, which actually I really liked. I think hosting is kind of a good niche for me. So, which is why now I host my own little like Shereen TV for Awaken the Rebel and stuff. But what I learned was that as I was on this journey of like finally doing what I really wanted to do and really going for it, what I kept doing was personal development classes. And then I got certified as a life coach and then I got certified in NLP. And what ended up happening was like coach just took the lead. I just was like, this is what fills me up. Like pouring into other people and helping them have their Awaken the Rebel moment, have the life of their dreams makes me feel like I'm doing something worth my breath of life, you know, as opposed to like making people laugh is worth it too. But for some reason, I just wasn't doing it enough for me, you know? So now I act like a geek and a life coach and it works out great. <laughs> no, it, it works out wonderful. And I'll tell you why. I love this. I mean, we're, we're in Los Angeles. We are around a lot of creative people. And in the work that I do, I often attract fashion designers, people that are in the beauty realm of things, even fitness professionals, artists, a lot of really creative people who want to not be the broke artist, right? So they want to make money from their art. They want to make money from their gifts and their God-given talents. What happens is that artist part of them is so inherent that the business side of them, they resist the business side. It feels very unnatural to them. So let's talk a little bit yeah. today. I want to get like three tips from you. Um, from the coaching perspective, you know, and then Shireen, the stand-up art, the stand-up comedian, like the performing artist, how have you been able to find a happy medium with regard to expressing yourself, being creative, and making a business out of it? So what would you say is the first thing you've done? 
That's a good question. I mean, when I really think about the happy medium of my like fun, artsy out there, like creator versus the part of me that's like entrepreneur, CEO, like badass bitch who wants to run her own empire in her own life. It's a big, I mean, that shoot, that in and of itself is like a book. You know what I mean? There's just so much that goes into that. And I think one thing, a simple thing that really, really helps is to be connected to other people who are on the same path. So like for me, I'm with you in our mastermind, which we call the moon circle. The moon <laughs> circle, we raise the roof for We got to be frou-frou about it. You know what I'm saying? Got to keep it fun. Um, and that really helps me to, like I stay connected to you and I see you on your path and I'm like, okay, Jacqueline's kicking ass and taking names and she's doing her thing. And you know, she makes X amount and she kills it here and she kills it there. And so I see that. And it encourages me, it challenges me, it inspires me. There's like a sisterhood there where I get along with you and I love you and we can go out for coffee and get our nails done, but we're all talking about like our empires that we're building. And I feel like that is something you need. Like if you don't have people who you can really connect with about this life, you'll feel like an island and um, it makes it less fun um, and more of a chore. Like it just feels harder. And so to make it easy on yourself... <laughs> Get a group or an accountability partner or what you know what you would call a power partner. So that's my little first suggestion. Yeah, for sure. The professional power partner. And I think part of what goes along with that is, you know, as entrepreneurs, we have fears, right? We fear that we're worse off than we are. So the last thing we want to do is necessarily share with someone where we're at. But I think yeah. um, trust is huge. And having a conversation with your professional power partner, don't let it be assumed that there's going to be confidentiality. Just address it. That's what part of being in business is about, having that communication. Right. But with our moon circle, you know, we, we help normalize a lot of things with regard to being entrepreneurs because we have that trust and we just like share it all and spill it all. All right. So right. what's the second thing, Miss Faltas, Miss Awaken the Rebel Shireen? <laughs> Okay, so good question. Second thing is a big one. Like I feel like this is one that if it if you don't if you're a creative type, like chances are you're motivated by fun. Like there's if you have you ever heard of like the disc profile, like the assessment of no. like, communications and behaviors. Okay, so it's like uh, disc D I S C. So like D would be like uh, sort of a dominant person who's like bottom line, get it done, get it done, get it done. Uh, C is like the person who needs all the details and like really needs information and they're not comfortable without information. I is like the inspired like salesperson, creative type, like all over the place, fun, fun, fun. And then um, S is the like supportive type who's really like uh, maybe like your admin or your support team, you know? Okay, creative types are I. We're like, woo! We're like, we're ah! fun. Yeah, like we're motivated by fun. We're motivated by recognition. We're motivated by fun, like for it to feel fun. So what you need to do is you need to uh, make your work fun. So like Jacqueline's like, we're going to do a Skype interview and we're going to be like infotainment. You know, we're giving them information, but we're like entertaining and having a good time at the same time because to us, it has to be fun. If it's not fun, I ain't in it. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just not going to work out for me. So that's the first thing. I think when I started to make the shift from I'm a creative type who who like does sales for a living but I'm this like stand-up comedian you know like I had like my career and then my creative was like outside of my real life when I started to go okay boom I'm gonna make being like a coach and a host and this whole empire that I'm building like my full thing so that means I need to shift into I'm not, I'm not compartmentalized into these two things I am all one which requires me to become badass CEO entrepreneur when I made that shift I really had to engage other parts of myself. I had to engage my D. Like I had to be like, bottom line, no joke. What works? What doesn't work? What do I need? What's not important? Make decisions, 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 decisions all freaking day. Dude, that burns out my eye. Like my eyes like, this isn't fun. This isn't fun. So you have to find a way to engage your other parts of yourself. You have to have a C. You have to look at your profit and loss. You have to look at how much money is going out and how much money is coming in. You have to look at, you know, who you want to collaborate with and if they're in alignment with your message. Just all kinds of shit that goes down. So you have to make it fun and you have to um, use that fun to fuel you to do the other things that maybe aren't as exciting but are needed to really create anything that is a badass empire. <laughs> the sustainable, right? Going back to we don't want yeah. you guys to be the broke artists. We want you to be the profitable artists. And I love yeah. the point that you brought up. I mean, Shereen and I the way we approach business, we not that there's anything wrong with the business blazer or anything like that, but 
we are trying to do business outside of the box. So we, we could give you the tips with the slides and all that stuff, but instead we just want to be authentic. We want to be ourselves and that's why we're making this video. So that's proof in action. All right, the third thing. What's the third thing? The third thing is really to um, basically, you know, find a way where you're, you have a mentor or a coach, okay? Like, I really think that when you do that, it takes things to the next level. So for your people who are watching right now, they're thinking like, oh, cool, Jacqueline knows what she's doing. She's made it happen. Maybe she could help me. The, the first truth is that when I hired a mentor, my game exponentially grew. Like, I cannot even explain how much my game changed. Like, she introduced me to people who were game changers. Um, she helped me create a brand that was a game changer. She helped me understand myself better so that I niched myself right. Like, this whole Rebel brand sort of came out of a conversation with her where I realized, what do I want? Like, what do I want to bring out in people? Like, who am I as, as a leader? Like, what am I eliciting you know, out of people. And also what do I want to like bring to the world? And so it just totally changed my game to have a mentor and a coach. So I definitely think you have to invest in yourself. Now, with that being said, you have to invest in yourself with sort of a caveat. Like sometimes when you're an entrepreneur or you're an artist or whatever, what you do is you feel insecure in this path because there's no freaking entrepreneur school, like high school, college, nothing sets you up to know what the hell to do in this business. Right. So you're figuring it out and you feel like you don't know what you're doing. You don't feel like a CEO yet. You feel like maybe like I felt like a comedian or I felt like a salesperson or I felt like a coach, but I didn't feel like a CEO. Like I had to learn to feel like a CEO. And she really helped me to do that. Now, again, the caveat is sometimes you can try and Fill the void. Like, I'm so scared that I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm going to pay. I'm going to throw freaking money at you to fix this problem. And you will go broke doing that. I went broke doing that. And so it's such an interesting balance. Again, always with the balance of, you know, the part of you that wants to grow big. Okay, great. Like, put money into having a mentor. They will exponentially grow you. They will tell you what to do. They'll make it simpler and easier. And they will also hold the space for you to believe it's possible for you to become what they have become. It's really important, but don't go crazy. You know, like, like do, do a, do a business on a budget. Like the things that I do now are so much more resourceful than I used to be. I used to just throw money at stuff. Cause I was like, ah, I don't know what to do. Ugh, fix it. You know? Whereas now I'm like, okay, I know what it is to be broke. <laughs> That shit ain't fun. So now I think much harder and I vet much harder and it's just, it's just better, you know? I love it. I mean, there's no one size fits all um, solution. And like you said, even seasoned entrepreneurs, we've gone through what we've gone through, but it's a very personal and very individualized experience. And, you know, we often hear like, focus on your strengths, focus on your strengths. And I'm a big advocate for focusing on your strengths. But I will also say one of the things that I had to do having a performing arts background, being a singer, dancer and comic myself was focus on my weaknesses. And it's almost like the fitness industry. You could sit there and want to pay for that monthly gym membership and have it on automatic debit. But if you aren't going to the gym, you're not going to lose weight. You're not going to build up your stamina. You're not going to build up your strength. So you absolutely have to work on it's strengthening those weaknesses and like mm -hmm. doing a to-do list for me used to be like pulling my teeth. I was like, I don't need to make a to-do list. It's all in my head. Oh, trust me. My productivity changed <laughs> every, <laughs> I made a to-do list, but you know what? I call my to-do list a priorities equals prosperity list. That's oh, the okay. difference. So there's all these little like devices that That's you true. need to learn for yourself and apply them. And yeah. What, what I also think happens too is that like why do the cobbler's kids have no shoes? So a lot of times we're really, really good as entrepreneurs or creatives at being able to offer advice to people. And I will say, turn that back around to yourself. Offer yourself your own advice and mm -hmm. take it. <laughs> and take right? it, right? <laughs> all right. So Shireen, how do we keep up with you and Awaken the Rebel and all that jazz? Plug us well, to Well, definitely visit me at awakentherebel.com. I have a cool little free coaching training there where you can download your Rebel rule book. It helps people to kind of get into really like who they are and what they want, and check out their values and what's going on inside so that they can write their own Rebel rules to their game. Um, and, you know, just kind of having fun with it. Right now I'm creating a program where I help people get on stage and do stand-up comedy for the first time. So many people are like, I really want to do it. I've never done it. I'm like, grab your balls. Let's do this. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. But definitely if you want to catch up, just go to awakentherebel.com and opt in for that training, and we will be in touch. <laughs> All right. And on that note, I'm going to close this out with a little Katy Perry, and I will say comedy was on my bucket list. It was the best thing I could have ever done. 
<laughs> singing was great. The voice audition was great. But the stand-up comedy was where it's at, people. So make sure you jump on that opportunity. Which Here's a little Katy Perry on my little iPad mini. Shireen, thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time, y'all, have a good one. Awaken that rebel.